Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Uh, today's video, we are going to be installing, boom, Mishimoto radiator. <laughs> so we're gonna be installing this bad boy and uh, gonna see if we gotta cut some things out of the way, but we'll see. Probably gonna have to chew some stuff up because this bad boy is thick. Three C's. And we also got a 160 degree thermostat that we're gonna put in. And we're gonna put in some hose. Where my hose at? And I'm gonna do some other things in there. Uh, I got some power steering lines that I wanna replace that are going to the cooler. And hook up some other lines to the heater core, the heater core to the water pump. Gonna knock some of that stuff out. So, more paw, less jaw. Let's get out into the driveway and start putting this bad boy in. All right guys, just to compare to the stock one versus the new one, they're gonna be identical lengthwise, but thickness, this one's only like one C, this one's three. So the stock one and the Mishimoto one, they have the same features. They have all the clips for your fans, the clip for your AC bracket, which is right there. Boop, boop. And you also have your automatic transmission cooling lines, which I am not using because I have a manual. And obviously this one's all aluminum construction. This one's got plastic outsides. Same thing over there, which is a popular fail point, which is when this one crapped out on me years ago. This is the new one. This is where it failed. It failed right in the plastic. So this should solve our problem and also being bigger, better cooling, especially for what I want to do with this car. I want to use this car more in an autocross fashion, uh, more track, not drag strip. Like if a drag strip's available, I'm going to, I'm going to run it, see what it does. But ultimately I want road course. That's why I got the coilovers and stiffening up the suspension just so it can handle turns better. And also, you know, kind of lowering the stance of the vehicle a little bit, not too much, but you'll see when it's completed. But let's start diving into some of this stuff. Uh, like I said, I wanted to change the power steering lines. They're especially going into the cooler because those things were leaking and I just want to change them entirely out. So let's jump into this head first and see if we can knock this out. All right, guys. Now these hoses in question that I was going to change are right here, those two. I disconnected them from here and I'm going to replace them. Uh, I wanted to replace these old lines. As you can see, they're kind of rusted out right there. But finding parts of this car is absolutely insane without going to a junkyard, so just going to stick with it. Now, excuse the landscaping noise because every landscaper is out here today. So, uh, I got to go under the car, I got to loosen those clamps. I'm going to take them off, I'm going to replace the clamps, and then we'll throw some hose at it. All right, guys, got these two little uh, douchebag hoses off. Uh, they sucked. Uh, best way I found to do it was, first of all, six and a half millimeter socket looses these stock clamps. And I just ended up shoving a screwdriver inside, spinning it around and walking it off. No big deal. Uh, I tried finding these hoses where the hose at, but uh, they don't sell them, but I just got hose that's good enough to do it. And also, if you're going this crazy like I am, just get a whole kit of these freaking things. Uh, I believe this was like 40 bucks on Amazon, not a sponsor. But it's good just to have these things laying around because you never know when you're going to need them. And especially the really tiny ones, as you can see, there's little itty bitties in there. So let me cut up the hose, where my hose at, your mom, and get this shit put in. I'm a bird. All right, guys, got my two bitches and hose in. Uh, they're clamped down, nice and easy. This shape pretty well. Uh, just set up your clamps in a favorable position just in case you need to change it out. So now let's go on to the radiator. So judging based on the size of the stock radiator, uh, these things either gotta get chopped or they gotta go. Now this one's easy to come out. I think it's just a wiring harness. Okay, yeah, so there's, there's a little wire here. It's zip tied in. And this is gonna snip that and get it out of the way. 
And then I'm gonna pull this part out. Now this side, you have part of the AC condenser line hooked in. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this out while cutting it. I'm gonna see if I can push it forward because this line's gonna trap it in because of right here. But I'm gonna see if I can push this this way and put it out here somewhere, see if I can get it out that way. If not, I'm gonna have to chop it with a Dremel or something. But let me play with that and I'll get back to you. All right guys, I got the passenger side off. Uh, cut the tie wrap holding this wire in. I'm not even sure what this wire is for, but uh, maybe an airbag, maybe hood sensor saying, oh, the hood's open. And also I had to chop it a little bit to get it out. So I'm just discarding this thing because I don't think it's really diverting anything. Uh, it's more for, I would imagine, just for the sock radiator. But uh, I'm gonna try and get this other side out without destroying it, but it's not looking good. But let me give it the old college try, see what happens. Let's push this like that way. Ooh, this may have, a, may have a chance. Right now, I don't know if you can see. Let's see if I can get this down. Ugh, down. So right here, I cut that out to get the radiator out because this line just kept hitting and I couldn't get the movement to get the radiator out. Now, maybe you're more resilient than me, but I ended up chopping. I gotta close this up. I wanna, I wanna weld it up and make it all nicey nice. But that's what I did. So, being that I almost slipped my wrist doing that, which maybe some of you are hoping Bruh. for. Daddy, chill. We don't do that here. Be careful. Aha, success. So, I was able to get that out in one piece. So, if you're using this, and you just wanna trim it up and make it all nicey nice, go for it. I'm not, yeet. All right guys, we're on to the fun part of the radiator. Now, before we go any further, I made a video a few months ago on how to flush and remove your old radiator. So if you're looking to do it, I'll put it somewhere up here and you can see how I took it apart. But you wanna keep your old hardware if you're going the route I'm going, so. Uh, just a couple little things, nothing crazy. So you have these two little donut guys. Mmm, donut. There's two little titties on the outside. You want to put one there, and you want to put one on the other side. And also you got these two little oddballs here. These go on the bottom so that it doesn't shake and rattle and crack. Little softeners. And also for the top of the donuts, you got these two little clips that clip into the radiator bracket. There's two of them there. E -e. See, one, two. So with the bottom ones, you're gonna want them facing downward like that. I don't know if you can see it, there we go. Yeah, you want them facing downwards like that. So the radiator's gonna sit up top. This is gonna sit on the cradle, frame, body, slash whatever. And let's throw this thing in. All right guys, just real quick. Uh, these things kept wanting to fall off. So what I did was I took a little electrical tape and just put like two or three wraps on and now that thing won't come off. And I did the same thing here. So this thing will push on and now it won't come off. So if these things are loose, get some little electrical tape, boop it on and it should be good to go. Now let me knock out the other side and then we'll start putting this bitch in. All right guys, our goal is to get those two bottom little bushings in there and that hole and those little donut things in here and right here. So. Slide this in, see what we get. All right, coming in. Get down. And donuts align. There we go. And in, hopefully. This thing's gotta go down a little more. It's gonna come down. And you are almost in. All right guys, ran into two fitment issues with the Mishimoto radiator. So from the outside edge of this post, which goes down into the body of the car underneath. So from here to here on the outside edges. So this side, this side is 29 and 5 eighths of an inch. From here to here, the two outside edges is 30 and a 16th. Now, if you come over here, from where this one's gonna sit, the rubber bushing to this one is smaller than 30 and a 16th. So this bushing doesn't fit. And also 
the radiator's making contact with my hood. So no bueno. Now that could be because it's an aftermarket hood. It makes contact, who knows. But to combat that, as you can see, I got two bushings here that go to the bottom. I shaved off this rounded part and hopefully it lowers it enough to get the clearance that I need to not hit my hood. So I'm gonna grind this one down to right about that little edge there, and hopefully that'll fit. This side goes to the driver's side, as you saw that oblong hole. I may have to trim some of this down, especially on the outside. So instead of being round, I'm probably gonna grind it down in half. Now, as far as the height goes, I really don't want to grind this part because it is welded into the radiator and I don't want any holes. So I'll probably end up grinding down this outside edge. And also, I may have to trim out some of this just to get enough room in there to make this thing fit. So you figure that this thing is made for this car, it would fit, but it doesn't. So let me grind down that bushing and grind down that little stub and hopefully that'll make it fit right. All right guys, quick update on what I did. Uh, I trimmed this little metal tab down. Let's see if I get this off. So just enough to get under the bushing, but not in the way of the body of the car. So that gives me another little bit of room to hopefully sneak that in. I also made a little slit so that no rubber gets caught up, hopefully. And I trimmed off the round part of this bushing so hopefully this thing will drop in so wish me luck i'm gonna go throw it in right now and hopefully this will be done all right guys ran into one small little issue that i just grinded it out of the way that little stud right there was sticking up too far i was hitting the radiator so i just grinded it down a little bit uh it was clearing when i had the regular bushings on but before i chopped them it had clearance but now it doesn't so i chopped that down a little bit so hopefully this works now all right guys, did what I did to the driver's side of the vehicle. I trimmed down this little nub about halfway through and cut it off because I was having the same issues that I was having on this side pre-cutting. Hopefully now it'll work. All right guys, after customizing the custom parts, finally got the radiator in. So there we go, all nice. Can't really show you the bottom, but it does sit flush now. And one issue I did have was right here, this little bracket was rubbing up against the radiator. So I just took a hammer and hit it over a little bit. Not the radiator, don't hit that. But I hit this little bracket here over. So now I have a little gap. Now, last thing I got to do is put this little clip in. And put it that way. And we should be done. There we go. So hopefully we're done. I'm gonna close the hood and make sure I got clearance and I will update you on that in one second. Okay guys, we got something that resembles an engine here. So do yourself a favor if you are putting the fan in after you put the radiator in. Take this hose out down here because it gets in the way of the fan. So it gives you plenty of room to slide this down because I had to take that out to get the room that I had or put the fan on the radiator and then drop it all in one shot. So obviously I put the intake on, I have clearance, I could close the hood. I'm not hitting anything over here really. Put the new tank on, I had to use the old hoses because there are no new ones to order and they're kind of shaped already so I am happy with this. So one final thing I gotta do for the coolant system is run a line from here on the radiator over to here. Now this one's tiny, that one's giant. So I'm probably gonna have to take a smaller hose, run it from here over to here somewhere, and then transition it from a smaller hose to a larger hose to accommodate this. It shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, I also gotta put fluid in here because that is bone dry. And obviously I gotta put coolant in it at some point, but that's gonna have to wait. And also the air cleaner, it's in the garage somewhere. It is dirty, I gotta clean that. And as far as the engine bay goes with being dirty, there's a local kid, I'm gonna have him do a little detail on the engine bay and the whole car while I'm at it. A couple other things I gotta do, I gotta get an alignment, I gotta get new tires, so I'm gonna do that first before I get detailed. And I gotta throw the exhaust on, that's another thing I gotta do. And then figure out the rear brake situation. So I'm hoping 
that I could spin it around the block, slam on the brakes really hard, activate the ABS system, and get the ABS pump to work to allow fluid to get through. I'm hoping that works. Eh, who knows? And while I got you here, the battery relocation. Now I plan on using these terminal blocks to run everything back to the trunk. Now, as you can tell, this is the negative end. There are two cables here. It looks like one goes to here to the body and the other one goes down to the engine block on the AC compressor bracket. So I'm gonna divvy that up and potentially put it under this block. Keep it all nice. And then as far as the positive goes, this little line goes up to the fuse box and we have a cable that goes from here to the alternator and from here to the starter. So I'm probably just gonna divvy this up, make it land in here somewhere. And then I'm gonna run the cable all the way to the back of the car. I'm probably going under the car because I do not see a way to get through the cabin without making it messy. So let me know what you guys think. Maybe you guys have a different setup, but I think these terminal blocks will work nicely here. And also if I need to get a, a negative for something like a sensor that I decided to put in or something, I could tie it in here. So let me know what you guys think about that. And let me know where you think I should place the battery in the trunk. Now I'm thinking about removing the spare tire and making a little home for it in the spare tire well. Or do you think I should put it on the passenger side of the trunk up against the fender, kind of like over there, like along the quarter panel? Let me know what you guys think if you've done this before. Where do you think is the best place to put it? So other than that, radiator's in. Engine's pretty much done, except for some minor tweaking of the throttle body. But we'll see about that when we get to that point after I get the exhaust on and obviously put coolant in this thing. So that does it for this video. We're that much closer to starting this bad boy up and putting it under its own power. Cannot wait. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, you know the deal. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later, kids.